Hi everybody, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and today is the beginning of video number one for the Orlaith robe sweater. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you this, put another picture in that video. In today's video, we're actually going to cover how to make the back and the two front panels. Okay, the two front panels of the sweater. Okay, for this video, all the yarn information that you need is in the video description below. And in this video, I will show you what I'm using, but these are the two yarns that I highly recommend. I am actually using the Cascade Yarn Superwash 220. It's the Aran size. And the Paint Box Yarns, um, the Aran, Simply Aran, makes an excellent acrylic choice for those of you who may be allergic to 100% wool. Okay, for this project, you're also going to need a copy of the pattern for the Orlaith Rope Sweater, which is only available right now in the Celtic Cable Crochet Book. Um, and if you haven't seen the introductory video, you're going to also need to make sure that you print off a copy of the errata listing for this project, just to make sure that you are right on track with all the correct numbers and everything and ready to go. If you're a first time visitor to my channel, please hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the other videos that are actually in this crochet along series. This is going to be a three video series. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. That really does benefit my channel tremendously. And if you can hit the notification bell, you won't miss any of the videos coming your way. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. For this project, I'm going to be using Cascade Yarns 220 Superwash Erin. And let me give you some of the stats on this. This is 100% superwash merino wool, 100 grams, 3.5 ounces. Each scan has 150 yards or 137.5 meters. I'm also recommending that you have a size I or 9 or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook or the hook needed for reaching gauge. And I'm also recommending that you have a yarn needle for hiding loose ends, of which there will be many, and a pair of sharp scissors. Just for clarification, I want you to know that I'm going to be working the size small for this particular project. And um, I just wanted to say that these sizes do tend to have a lot of ease in them. So if you're typically an extra large, you may want to consider making the large size just because of the stretchability um, and, again, the ease, which is built into these stitches. The numbers available in the schematics in this on page 61 of the book are when the fabric is at rest. But since we know that the wool is going to have a lot of stretch to it, that's why I'm also saying that it's, it's might, might be better that you choose one size smaller before you begin, or at least that has been my experience. I'm normally a size medium. I'm going to go make the size small because uh, that just tends to fit me better with these schematics. Okay, I want to help you by giving a quick tutorial on how to decode some of this information which is throughout this pattern. And I'd highly recommend that you take a, like a yellow or a pink highlighter to highlight the size and information that only pertains to your size for your particular project. Okay, so in this information, they're going to be in this order. The first is going to be the information for the extra small. Then inside the parentheses, the information for small, medium, large, extra large, 2x, 3x, and always in this particular order. So as we apply that to the amount of material needed um, for, for the how many 150 yard hanks, we have for the extra small, we would need 14. Uh, 15 for the small, 16 for the medium, 16 for the large, 17 for the extra large, 18 for the 2x, and approximately 19 for the 3x. So as we begin this project, I'm, for example, I'm working on the small size. So the small information is right here, so I'm going to be starting off with the chain of 75. If you work the extra small, you're going to be doing a 71 chain. And of course, the numbers get larger for the larger sizes and you can find them in the same order in the parentheses. And as you read through the pattern, the same is going to be here um, and for the stitch count and everything. When it gets down to the row numbers um, down here, these row numbers are going to change. So as I'm working on row 58, if you're working on the medium size, you're actually gonna be on row 60. So you're gonna to wanna to pay attention 
to this as some of the numbers are going to be different from what I am showing you as I go forward in this pattern. Well, let's just go ahead and begin. To begin, we're going to start with the back of the sweater. We're going to begin with our slip knot. And for the size small that I'm going to be making, I'm going to chain 75. If you want to make a different size, please refer to the book that will have all the variations of the numbers that you're going to need for this project. For row one, we're going to work a double crochet in the third stitch from the hook and in each stitch across. So go ahead and work that, including the turning chain, you should have 73 double crochets across this row. Again, I'm referring to the size small. Um, please check the pattern for the other numbers that you're going to need. So at the end of row one, you should have a total of 73 double crochets. Again, if you're making this small, that does not include the turning chain. I just wanted to correct myself there. That's just counting the double crochets. Now we're going to turn for row two, chain two, and starting in the second stitch, we're going to skip the first stitch. We're going to work front post, double crochet, followed by a back post, double crochet. We're going to work that all the way across the row, alternating front post, double crochet, and then back post, double crochet. After working the front post and back post, double crochets all the way across, we're going to work a half double crochet in the chain two turning chain, just like that. So now, after doing this, we're going to start row three. Now rows three through nine are going to be worked the exact same way. So go ahead and work rows three through nine in the way I'm about to show you here. I'm going to chain two. And again, we're going to skip that half double. And we're going to work front post over the front post. And then back post, double crochets over the back post. We're going to alternate that back and forth all the way across the row for the next seven rows. Again, rows three through nine. So go ahead and complete that portion. And this is the bottom ribbing of the back of the sweater. Now the next two rows that we're going to do, rows 10 and 11, are going to actually establish um, the pattern stitch that we're going to be working for quite a few rows after this. So we're going to start off with the chain one and starting in the next stitch. So we're not going to work in this half double. We're starting in the next stitch. We're going to work what they call two stitch which is a single crochet, and then the next stitch, working in the top loops, double crochet. We're going to do that a total of six times. So this is one repeat of that, and the second time, single crochet, and then the next stitch, double crochet. So that's two repeats. We're going to do that until we, again, have done that six times, a total of 12 stitches. And there's one other thing I should tell you before I go any further. Should I ever go too quickly for you on my stitching? I apologize, first of all. But secondly, I have a solution for you. Down in the right-hand corner, there's a little gear-shaped icon. If you just click on that, it'll bring up a playback speed, and you can select a slower speed. If I become too boring for you, you can speed me up. If, it's, if you're watching the left-hand videos, they'll be on this side. If you're watching from an iPhone or um, a cell phone, up in the upper right hand corner, it'll be on this side for the left hand version. There'll be three vertical dots and that will do the same thing. Click on that when the video is not moving and that will bring up a playback speed. So let's go ahead and see what we've gotten here. We have need to do six repeats. We have one, two, three, four. I just need to do two more. And that's the fifth repeat and the sixth repeat. Now we're going to work a four post cable. We're going to skip the next two stitches for this four post cable. We're going to front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. That's one and two. 
Now we're going to, working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble crochet in the two stitches that were skipped. So let's go ahead and do those. So that's what you should have so far. Now in between the four post cable and the next cable, which is a weight cable, we're going to work one set of the two stitch, which again, single crochet and double crochet. Now do be careful that as you go across between working in the top of the loops and doing the post stitches that you don't double dip and accidentally do a stitch two times. Um, that will really throw your stitch count off if you do that. Okay, so now we're ready to work the wheat cable. So to do this, we're going to skip the next two stitches, one, two, and we're going to front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. Working behind these two stitches, we are going to work front post stitches in these two stitches. It's going to be a little tricky, but it's not impossible. We're going to come into the hole behind, from the behind, and we're going to front post treble, there we go, in that first stitch. I'll do this one, next one a little more slowly. And then we're going to do the one right next to it, which is right back here. This is a good idea if you could use the um, the receptors, you know, the, the nerve endings in your fingers to find which is the next stitch. So we come back into the hole here, and we're going to do a front post treble crochet. So if we stick our thumb up there, that makes it much easier to get. Okay, so that is the first part of the wheat cable work. Now we're going to do the second part. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble crochet, and the next two stitches. And now working in front of the last two stitches, just like we did over here on this cable, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Just like that. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work another two stitch, a single crochet in the next stitch and then a double crochet in the next stitch. And we're going to work another four post cable right here. So we skip the next two stitches, front post double crochet, I'm sorry, front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. It's very easy to misspeak sometimes in these videos and if I ever do, I will try to correct what I say across the bottom there as I do the editing. Now working in front of these two stitches, we front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. Okay, so that is the cabling beginning on the one side. Now we're going to work the double stitch in space in between. Now this is where I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and quickly check your pattern for how many double stitches you're going to need for the center portion. After having just checked my pattern for the small size, I'm going to do four repeats of the two stitch. So that'll be a single crochet, double crochet, that's one set. That's two sets, three sets, and four sets. Okay, now we are going to repeat what we did over here, the four post cable, a single crochet, double crochet, the weak cable, single, double, and then another four post double crochet, and I'll go ahead and work this with you. Now remember, like I've said before, I know I'm repeating myself, but if you're working a larger size, you're gonna need more of these in between do check the pattern for that information. So now we're working the four post cable, 
I've skipped the first two stitches, front post treble, and the next two, working in front of these two stitches, front post treble, and the two stitches that were skipped. Now I'm going to work a single crochet and then a double crochet. Now for the wheat cable, skip two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. Working behind these two stitches this is where we come into the hole, front post treble in those two stitches that were just skipped. Make sure you get around the entire stitch and not just a few strands when you do that. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. Excuse me. And working in front of the two stitches that we just worked, we're going to front post treble in those two skipped stitches. So that was the wheat cable. Now we're going to do another single crochet and double crochet, being careful that we didn't skip or double dip on any of these stitches as we go across. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two. This is, again is another, another four post cable. Working in front of these two stitches, make sure we front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. And let's pause and take a look at this to make sure we did it correctly. Okay, so this is the same as what is on the other side. So the only thing that we have left now, and this is consistent for all sizes, is we're going to work the single crochet, and then the double crochet, we're going to do six repeats or work it over the next 12 stitches. I'll go ahead and work this with you. So that's two, three, four, five, Six. The last stitch of row number 10 is actually worked in the last stitch of row number 9, not in the turning chain. Now if you have another version of the pattern that may indicate that is the turning chain, please follow the video. So let's go ahead and work row number 11 with a chain 1. And one thing about this 2 stitch that gives it a great texture is that you're going to need to work a single crochet over the double crochets and a double crochet over the single crochets. And I'll work that for you in just a minute. But by having this variety as we go across, it just gives it, I, I think, a delightful um, texture, delightful fabric. So we're going to work single crochet over that double crochet and a double crochet over the single crochet. It kind of evens out as we go across. So we're going to repeat that those two stitches together six times. So that's two repeats, three repeats, four repeats, five repeats, and the last repeat. Okay, so after we work that, we come to the backside facing of that four post cable. We're just going to work four back post double crochets over those four stitches. One, two, three, and four. Now we come to the two stitch or the double stitch again. We work a single crochet over that double crochet and then a double crochet over that single crochet. Now we, the next eight stitches are the back side of the wheat stitch. Simply work eight, it's going to say four there, but eight back post 
double crochets, four plus four. So that's three, four, and on the other side, five. Let's try that one again. I want to make sure I get all strands. That's six, seven, and eight. As we work over these weed stitches, it's very important that you do have eight back posts, double crochets, and over the four posts, make sure you have one, two, three, four of those back post double crochets because you're going to need to keep that constant as we go forward. And then in between, we do the single crochet over the double crochet and then a double crochet over that single crochet for that two stitch or the double stitch there. And then another cable, four back post double crochets over that four post cable. Okay, now this is the center section. Again, this is the section that will vary depending on the size that you are making. So go ahead and work single crochet in the double crochets and a double crochet in those single crochets as we do those two stitch section. So go ahead and complete that. For the small size, I'm only doing four sets of these, but if you're having to make a larger size, you're going to need more. So just know that that's where the differences are in these numbers as we go across. Now we're going to repeat just like we did on the other side with that four post cable. Work four back post double crochets. And then the two stitch work a single crochet and then a double crochet and then eight back post double crochets over this back side of the wheat cable that's four and that's five six, seven, and eight. And then now again, the two stitch or the double stitch, single crochet, and then a double crochet. Also notice that you're going to always be starting with a single crochet on these two stitch. Okay, now four back post double crochets for the four post cable. Now we have the two stitch. So single crochet over that double crochet and then a double crochet over the single. And we all have six sets or 12 stitches to get us to the end. It's very important that you make sure that you're alternating single crochet, double crochet accordingly. Okay, and then the last stitch, we're going to work a double crochet in that last stitch, just like that. And let's take a look across. Okay, let's take a look and turn and see what the front side looks. Ah, that looks nicer. And as we get more rows worked, you will really see this cable pop. You'll understand why why this um, cable here is called the weed stitch as it opens up with each additional cable that we crochet. Now for the small size, I'm going to have to work rows 12 through 58, just repeating row 10 and 11 over and over again. So now if you are working other sizes, please check the pattern because some of you will be 
doing only 56 up through rows 56, and some will need to go through row 60, and some through row 62. Again, it's just repeating this until you have that number of rows in the back of the sweater. So go ahead and work, work that. I'm going to be working again for size small, size rows 12 through 58, repeating rows 10 and 11. So after finishing up the first section here, and for the small size, I've worked up to row 58, and that last row was worked with the front side facing, and you should have quite a bit of length on this. Okay, now we are going to begin working the armhole decreases, which are going to bring both ends, this end and the other end of our rows, in a bit. Okay, now this is again where you need to watch your pattern for the correct number of stitches. Now we're ready to work the decreases for the armholes and this is the way all sizes are going to be worked. The only difference is the number of stitches that are worked in between, you know, in between are going to be different. So first of all, we're going to chain one and then we're going to slip stitch in the first four stitches. And we are not going to work in these once we've worked these slip stitches. Now we're going to work a double crochet two together over the next two stitches. So what we do is we wrap, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then do that again. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. So essentially we have made a decrease by changing two stitches into one. And now all we need to do is continue in our pattern stitch, which would be the single crochet over the double crochet, double crochet over the single crochet, till we get to the cabling sections. And let's just talk about that. We're working with the back side facing, so when we get to the cabling section, we're just going to work those four back post double crochets, just like you've been doing all along over the last 50 or so rows. And then um, single crochet, double crochet, eight back post double crochet over the wheat stitch, etc., all the way across, just maintaining pattern stitch. Go ahead and do that until you get to the last six stitches here. Once you get to the last six stitches, stop and I will show you how to work the decreases for that side. After working in pattern stitch all the way across the row, we have left the last one, two, three, four, five, six stitches unworked, and we're going to work a double crochet two together over the next two stitches, just like we did on the other side. So that's half of that double crochet and do it in that next stitch. Three loops on the hook and yarn over and pull through all three. So we've basically reduced these two stitches to one, making a decrease. So the number of stitches should have decreased by a total of 10 from the previous stitch count for whichever size you were working on. You can always check the pattern for that. And again, check the errata listing um, on my Bonnie Bay Crochet Dot com website. I will put that information in the video description below just so you can verify since there are a few different versions of this pattern available. Okay, so now we are ready to work the next row, which is also going to be a decreased row. For the small, I am actually on row number 60 right now. We're going to chain one. After that chain one, we're going to double crochet two stitches together over the first two stitches. Just like we did on the end of the last row. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. So we have taken two stitches down to one. And then we continue in our pattern stitch all the way across until we get to the last two stitches of our row and then we are going to work another decrease. So I'm going to go ahead and work this across and then I will work that decrease at the end of the row with you. After working in pattern stitch all the way across, we're going to come to our last two stitches and work 
the double crochet two together for a decrease. Okay, so now we're going to turn and the next two rows are going to be worked the same as the last row that we just worked. So we're going to work two more rows where we decrease the stitch at the beginning of the row. I'm going to go ahead and start this, but you should know how to do that. We're going to do a double crochet decrease. And then work all the way across the row and then do another decrease at the end. So go ahead and work two more rows like this. So after we completed those rows, I wanted to show you the indentation that you should have on both sides of your sweater. And this is to allow for the sleeves to come later to be sewn or attached. Okay, now we are going to just work in pattern stitch, just continue what we're doing. And you need to consult your pattern and the line that is right above where it says right front panel, this is the last line in the back section. For the small size, I'm going to continue and crochet 15 more rows. If you're a the extra small, it would only be 14 rows. Um, for medium, it's also 15 rows. Um, for the large, it's going to be 16, 19 for the extra large, 20, and then 21 for the 2X and 3X. So make sure that you are consulting the pattern so that you know how many rows to continue. So go ahead and continue the, those um, rows and then I will show you what I have when I'm done because that will be the ending of the back section. At the end of the last row, we're just going to fasten off with the chain, give it a tug, and clip a generous strand so that it will be easy to hide when we're putting this uh, together and hiding all the loose ends. And let's go ahead and turn. I'm going to give you just a close-up of how the arm opening should look. You can see, see the um, little indentation here and then the 15 rows or however many rows that you're making for your armhole and the other side should look pretty much the same. I'm going to go ahead and put a still shot right here of what this looks like all stretched out. This is an unblocked picture and that is the back. Now this is the largest piece. Now we're ready to begin the right front panel and we're going to start with a slip knot just like we did the back starting chain and we are going to chain 39 if you're making this small. If you're making the other sizes, please check the pattern so that you have the correct number of chains to begin with. Now for row one, we're going to begin with a double crochet in the third chain from the hook and in each chain across. Once we complete this, if you're working this small size, you will have 37 double crochets, not including the turning chain. For the other sizes, please check the book and the number of stitches in the row should be at the end of row one of the right front panel. So this is what you should have at the end of row one. Now we're going to turn and chain two and just like we did with the, the back on the ribbing, we're going to skip the first stitch and we're going to work a front post double crochet in that first stitch and then a back post double crochet in the next and we're going to alternate that across the row. Front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet. So go ahead and work that all the way across and I'll show you the last stitch. At the end of the row we work a half double crochet in that turning chain just like we've been doing. So now we're going to turn chain two let me go ahead and do that a little bit tighter. There you go, chain two. And now to begin row three, I'm going to show you the beginning of row three, but row th rows three through nine are going to be worked the exact same way. We skip this first stitch, and then we work a front post double crochet in the first stitch, followed by a back post double crochet as we work the ribbing. Then we do that alternating all the way across. And at the end of row number three, we're going to work a half double crochet worked in this chaining two, chain two space 
and um, we're going to work again rows three through nine in the same manner so go ahead and complete the next seven rows rows three through nine after working those nine rows we should have our ribbing that looks like this for the right front panel now we're going to start our cabling or our pattern stitch rows starting in the second stitch we're going to work the single crochet and double crochet and again check your pattern for how many repeats of this if you're working the size small like I am you're going to have to repeat that two times or a total of four stitches so make sure you're consulting your pattern for the um, other sizes there after we do that we're going to do our cabling pattern we're going to do the four post cable skip the first two stitches front post treble crochet in the next two stitches and the cabling pattern of course is identical to what we were doing on the back side but I'll go ahead and go through this row with you working in front of these two stitches we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped okay now we go back to the two stitch single crochet in the next stitch and a double crochet in that next stitch and now we work our wheat cable skip the next two stitches front post treble crochet in the next two stitches working behind these last two stitches we make we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped Make sure we go through all the loops. Oh, having trouble with this one. Okay, there we go. And now skip the next two stitches and front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. And this is completing the the wheat stitch okay just like that now we do another single crochet and then double crochet and then of course we do the four post cable by skipping the next two stitches front post treble in the next two stitches Working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. And then this is where you check your pattern. I'm going to be working six repeats of the double stitch or two stitch, which is repeats of the single crochet, double crochet. And again, if you are, I guess everybody does the same. Yeah, I think we all, all work this the same it's just the beginning part of this row that is different for the various sizes so let's go ahead I'm going to finish this to the end and just to be clear that last stitch is worked in the last stitch not in the turning chain just in top of that last um, stitch there and let's go ahead and take a look at what we have it should look pretty familiar now we're going to turn and row 11 we're going to chain one and we are going to work single crochet double crochet repeat that over the first 12 stitches or we're going to have six repeats of that double stitch to begin this row it, and as you probably already found out if you've come this far and you've completed the the back already you know once you do this several hundred times the muscle memory in your hands really does kick in and you don't have to think about it as much with the alternating the single crochet and the double crochet okay now that we come to the the um, back of that four post cable we're just going to work four back post double crochets one over each of the next four stitches and then a single crochet and a double crochet which is 
those two stitches in between the cables and then now with the the back side of that wheat cable we're going to work one back post double crochet in each of the next eight stitches and etc i'm just going to i'm just going to work this with you across the row That's number seven and number eight. Work across that weed stitch and then single crochet, double crochet in between the cables and then four more back post double crochets. One, two, three, and four. And then we finish the row with our single crochet, double crochet, double stitch, two stitch, whatever you want to call this. And again, this is going to vary how many repeats you do depending on the size. So I only had two repeats or four stitches for the small. Of course, for the larger sizes, you're going to have more. Um, so go ahead and finish that. And then once we do those two rows, we are going to repeat and let me go ahead and give you the number of repeats here. Now for the small size, you're going to be um, repeating rows 10 and 11. Um, this would cover rows number 12 through 58. We're just going to be repeating rows 10 and 11. So go ahead and work this through row 58 or the number of rows according to the size that you are working on. This is what you should have for the right front panel. After crocheting that first section for the small, this has taken me up through row 58. Um, the first number at the beginning of that row will say 50, let's see, um, 12 through 56. Of course, I'm doing a small, so that means um, for me through row 58 and for the other sizes, please check the pattern. Now we're ready to begin the decrease rows, which will say row 57, and then within that first parenthesis, um, row 59, which is the one I'll be working on. And this is going to be done in a similar fashion, just like we did, or at least on one side, like we did for the back of the sweater, but it will end differently on the other side. So let's go ahead, and we're going to chain one, and we're going to slip stitch in the first four stitches and again these will not be worked on again because this is where the um, indentation for the underarm is going to be okay so now for the next section or the next two stitches we're going to work a double crochet two together so go ahead and do the first part of that double crochet and then do this again for the next stitch three loops yarn over pull through all three we've changed changed two stitches into one and now we're going to simply work across in pattern stitch until we get to the last two stitches. And when we get to that, I will show you the decrease there. Um, so go ahead and work across in pattern stitch. At the last two stitches, we're going to double crochet two stitches together. Yarn over, pull through all three. So we've made a decrease on this edge. This is actually going to be the neck edge. So now we are ready to turn and begin the next row. Now we begin row 60 with a chain one and we're going to continue working in pattern stitch. Now when you work over these decreases, make sure you look to see what comes next so that you don't do two stitches that are the same in a row. So you're gonna need to work a single crochet over this stitch, so let's go ahead and start this with a double crochet. And then just be careful to work over pattern stitch as you go and just complete that row and uh, I'll show you the last two stitches. At the end of this row, we're going to double crochet together the last two stitches, which remember now the last stitch is going to be the double the double crochet together decrease that we worked here and then this stitch. So let's go ahead and do those. Yarn over, pull through three. 
Now we're ready to begin the next row, which is going to be row number 61. For the small size, um, the first number, again, at the beginning of this row says 59, which is for the extra small. So I'm just giving you that number here and there just so that you know where you are in the book pattern. Okay, so now we're going to chain one and we're going to work a double crochet decrease over the first two stitches and work in pattern stitch to the last two stitches of the row and then we'll do another decrease. So go ahead and work in pattern stitch to the last two stitches of row 61 for the small size. At the end of this row we work the double crochet decrease and now we're going to turn. Now I'm going to be working row 62 for the small size. It will say row 60 as the first number to the left in the book and then of course you may be on a different row if you're doing a different size but I'm just trying to use those two numbers as a reference to where we are in the pattern. Um, for this it says to repeat row number 60 or the first number would be 58 at the beginning of, you know, to furthest to the left on that um, pattern. So we're going back two rows, and this is the row where we work an established pattern to the last two stitches. So in other words, we are going to start here, no decrease, and work all the way across until we get to the arm portion, and then work another decrease, a double by double crocheting two together, over the last two okay. stitches. So go ahead. I'll go ahead and start this one for you. So we're just working in pattern stitch. No decrease on this side. This is actually the next side. So don't decrease this particular row for that side and work all the way across and I will show you the double crochet two together decrease at the end of this row. Once we get to the end of that row, let's go ahead and do a double crochet two together decrease over those last two stitches so you can see the arm portion coming in with those decreases and this is going to match what we did on the back side of the sweater. Now we're ready to work row 63. Again the number farthest to the left outside the parenthesis will say num row number 61 just just for clarity and of course pick the number row you know, to the right of that, it'll tell you which row that you are on at this point. But I just wanted to, again, point out where we are in the pattern. And that row says to work an established pattern to last two stitch. So go ahead and work across. We're not decreasing on, on the arm edge any longer. This is just going to continue to go straight up at this point, but as you will see in the next couple rows, we are going to continue to decrease gradually on the next side. So all that to say, just work across an established pattern until you get to the last two rows, which will be the neck edge. So at the end of row 63, we're going to work a double crochet two together on those last two stitches at the neck edge. Now we're going to turn and the next row, it will say row 60, let's see, row 62 to the far left, which is the extra small. I'm going to be working on row 64 and the larger numbers for the other larger sizes are to the right of that. And it simply says to work an established pattern. So I'm going to chain one and let's see, I'm going to make this a single crochet and then we're going to work an established pattern to the end of the row. Now for the next four rows, we are simply going to repeat the last two rows that we did two times. So that means repeating uh, rows 63 and row 64. Again, these are the, the numbers for the small size. Um, go ahead and repeat those two more times. If you need uh, stitch support, you can just back up this video where it says row 63 and work those two rows. And just to give further clarity on these next four rows, we're going to work a cross in pattern stitch, going to decrease a stitch at the neck edge, and then work a cross in pattern stitch without decreasing, and then do that again. Work a cross again, 
in pattern stitch and decrease at the neck edge and then work again across in pattern stitch and let me just talk a little bit about this and as you work those decreases we are getting into the cabling section just work through the top of these loops as you work those decreases and the the post stitches that may be left for you to crochet just crochet over them as a post stitch for more clarity i just wanted to work that decrease this is the first repeat of row 63 and so we have worked three stitches over the cable if you're working this size with me of course you know the other sizes you may be working over different stitches and what we're going to do is work in the top loop for that first stitch of part of the double crochet two together and then the next stitch yarn over and pull through all three and now, now as i work the first repeat of row 64 i'm going to chain one and you can see we only have three stitches here for the cable. There are a couple things that you can do for this. Um, you can just work straight front post double crochets over these three stitches, or you can try to cross the cable with just that one stitch. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just leaving that up to however you prefer this to look. So I'm going to skip this stitch and just continue that four post cable, but I'm going to do it with three cables. I'm sorry, three three stitches and it's whatever you like you can try you know one and then the other and see what you prefer so I'm just going to do that as that cable comes in and then continue in pattern stitch as we work the second repeat of row 63 we have the last two stitches here and here and this is one of those cable four post cable stitches go ahead and work in the top loops for those double crochet two stitches together for that decrease again this is at the neck edge and then we turn and our last repeat of row 64 this again is the four rows that we are um, working on the next four rows section and we're just going to chain one and we are just going to work in pattern stitch let's go ahead and take a look at this so i'm just going to work a single crochet for that first stitch and over the next two stitches you can just work front post double crochets over those cables and work in pattern stitch all the way arrest you know away across that row for the next row this will be row 69 for the small size the it'll say row 67 to the far left um, in the book and of course the larger numbers to the right we are going to repeat row 63, which would be the row that works in the established pattern all the way across, and then we will work another decrease on this end. So let's go ahead and go ahead and work that all the way, and I will show you the decrease at the end of this row. At the end of row 69, I'm going to work that double crochet, two together, decrease over those last two stitches and let's turn and see what the front side looks like at this point okay so this again is the arm section which we have not been decreasing for the last several rows and then the neck edge should have a gradual decrease and as you can see it has decreased into the stitching and don't worry about how this looks right now because this is going to be offset by a lovely ribbing um, collar that's going to come right around here and around the front of the, the project. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look. It says the next seven rows. Um, now, when it says the next seven rows, make sure you look inside the parentheses because inside that first parenthesis for the small size, it says the number eight. So it's really the next eight rows. And of course, the larger sizes, we're going to have more rows. Um, it says to work in the established pattern over the particular number of stitches that are left. And then we will fasten off after that. So I'm going to go ahead and work in pattern stitch. I'm going to go ahead and get you started on this because this could be confusing. I'm actually going to go back here. I'm going to work a double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, single crochet. So just to make sure I keep that 
pattern going. And instead of working a front post here, I am just going to work an established um, double stitch there. And again, um, depending on what size you are working on, for example, if you're working on the extra large or 2x large, you're probably going to still have a cable here to work over. So you just have to kind of look and see what you have left and and just follow that accordingly, working in pattern stitch. Okay, I've just fastened off and cut a nice long strand. And let's go ahead and take a look. This is the side that is the neck edge right here. You can see that gradual decrease side and the armhole, which is right here. And if you wanna see more of the length, I'm gonna put a picture of that right here uh, so that you can see what this looks like. And this should be the same length as the back. Okay, so make sure that you have the same number of rows and it should be the same um, length. Now we're gonna go ahead and work on the left front panel, which is slightly different. It starts very similarly, but the way um, the number of stitches in between the uh, cabled motif are gonna be slightly different. Now for the left front panel, the first nine rows are exactly the same as the left front panel, I'm sorry, the right front panel, and we go ahead and we start with our chain, and then we're going to work double crochets in the chain, and then followed by the next eight rows, which is going to be front post and back post double crochet for the ribbing. If you need additional stitch support for what that looks like, go ahead and look across the bottom of the screen. I'll put a time mark where you can go back and look at that from the right front panel. After working the first nine rows of the left front panel, this is what you should have. It should look exactly like what you had after the right front panel for the first nine rows. Now, what's gonna be different is how many repeats are of the double stitch on each side. So we're gonna chain one and working, starting in the second stitch, we're gonna skip this stitch, starting in the next stitch. We're gonna work a single crochet and then a double crochet. We're gonna do that six repeats or over 12 stitches. So I'll go ahead and do these with you. Now these are the two rows that we're going to be repeating a lot. So this is row 10 and then I'm gonna do row 11 and it's gonna be very similar at that point. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and let's get this out of the yarn. There we go, 12. So let's just make sure we have six repeats. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now we begin the cabling pattern that you should be very familiar with at this point. We skip two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches, working in front of the last two stitches. We front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. You want to make sure that we're careful that we're not double dipping into these other stitches over here. We don't want to double dip and we don't want to skip any either. And now we work a single crochet and then a double crochet. And now we begin the wheat stitch, skip the next two stitches, front post, treble crochet in the next two stitches. Working behind these two stitches, we come into the hole here and we front post treble in those two stitches that we just skipped. Skip the next two stitches, one, two, and then front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of those last two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. And now we work single crochet and then a double crochet. Let's just take a pause. And now we're ready for our four post cable. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches. 
working in front of those last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. And now all that's left is two repeats of the double stitch or single crochet, then a double crochet, and then one more time, single crochet, and a double crochet. And again, this is the par portion where if you are working the larger sizes, you're going to have more stitches here. Okay, this is the, um, yes, okay, this is the left front panel. So this is going to be the part where the neckline will be decreased later on. Okay, so now we're going to work row 11, chain 1, and we're going to work single crochet and then a double crochet, working that double stitch, being careful that you work a single crochet over the doubles and a double crochet over the singles. And then we get get to the back side of the cable and you know what to do here. Back post, double crochets over each of those four stitches. Then single crochet and that double crochet, double crochet and that single crochet. And then back post double crochet over the next eight stitches, which is that wheat cable. I know many of you don't need me to go through all of this, but just in case there's somebody that does, I definitely want to be clear. And it's not a bad idea to start out these rows the correct way since we're going to be working them for a while once we finish this particular row. Okay, so that's the eight stitches of the wheat stitch. And then we get to the single crochet and then a double crochet working over that two stitch or double stitch section. And then four more back post. Let's get through all the strands. There we go back post, double crochets, and all we have left now are the 12 stitches of the alternating single crochet, double crochet with that double stitch. So I'll go ahead and work this all the way to the end. I hope you're finding that the muscle memory has kicked in by this point. And you don't have to think as much about whether you're doing a single crochet or double crochet. It's really nice when that happens because it really becomes more relaxing and less taxing on the old brain. Okay, so work my last double crochet. Let's go ahead and turn and take a look at what we should have here. Again, this is the left front panel and just finished row number 11. So now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this. Let me give you the information that you're going to need. You're going to work rows. If you're working the small size, you're going to be working rows 12 through 58. Now this I'm reading in the book on page 59 where it says rows 12 through 56 under the left front panel. And you'll see all those other numbers after the 58 and that'll have you know, the medium, the large, extra large, 2x and 3x numbers there. So go ahead and consult that for how many rows to complete. Complete, And you're going to be repeating rows 10, oops, excuse me, rows 10 and 11 until you reach that number of rows. So go ahead and do that and then we'll work the decreases for the armhole and the neck together after this. Okay, after completing through Row 58, this is what we should have for the left front panel. And do notice that this is the this is the side that will be for the neck edging and the wider side will be where the armhole um, decreases are going to start with this next row. Now the next row for me with the small size is row 59. Um, in the book it will say row 57 outside the parenthesis and then the next number inside the parenthesis is row 59 for my size and then the other sizes for the you know the larger numbers are after that. So I'm going to go ahead and the first thing we're going to do is make a decrease, a double crochet two together in the first 
two stitches. Again, this is for the, the neck edge decrease, which is the more gradual decrease. And then we're going to work in pattern stitch all the way across until we get to the last six stitches. So work in pattern stitch and I will show you the last six stitches of this row. After having worked in pattern stitch across to the last six, one, two, three, four, five, six stitches, we are going to work a double crochet decrease over the next two stitches and we're going to leave the remaining four stitches unworked. This is going to be for the armhole decrease. Okay, now we're ready to turn and we're ready to begin the next row. Now I'm beginning on page 60 of the book and we are at row number 60 for the small size, the first number outside the parentheses for this row is um, 58. So it's the first thing that you see on page number 60. So we're going to chain one and we are going to work a double crochet decrease right at the beginning over those two stitches. And then we are going to work in pattern stitch to the end. Um, and that's pretty much what you do for this. So all the way to the end um, without any more decreases. Now for the next row, this is row 61 for the small size. The number to the far left on this row numbering is 59. That's for the extra small. Okay, so now we are going to start with a decrease. We are working on the neck, the neck edge here. Do a double crochet two together, decrease over those first two stitches. And then we're going to work in pattern stitch all the way across to the last two stitches and then we'll work another decrease. So I'll go ahead and work across this row in the pattern stitch and I will show you the decrease at the end of the row. At the end of row 61, we work that double crochet two stitches together for the end. So we're, that decrease was done on the armhole edge. And now we're gonna chain one, gonna turn and now we are going to do row 62. It will say row 60 outside the parentheses, but we are on row 62 for the small size, and it says to repeat the row 58 and then inside the parentheses for me, row 60. Um, so that's gonna be a decrease. Let's go ahead and do a decrease. Let's move that out of the way so the camera doesn't focus on that. Do a decrease at the beginning of this and then we are going to work in pattern stitch all the way across the rest of the row. So go ahead and finish that row. There is no decrease on this end. So just to let you know, no decrease at the end, just work all the way to pattern stitch. Now I'm ready to work on row 63 for the small size. In the book, it will say row 61 outside the parentheses. And of course, 63 is the first number for the small and then the other numbers afterwards. Okay, so we're going to chain one. And this is, just to be clear, this is the, the neck edge. And we're going to work a double crochet decrease over the first two stitches and then work an established pattern all the way across the rest of the row. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. We have our decrease there at the neck edge and then work in established pattern. And just to let you know, when you get to the end here, we, we are going to work in all the stitches and that is the end of the decreasing on the armhole opening. Okay, so we're only going to be decreasing in future rows on the neck side. Now for row 64 for the small size, this is the last row on the left side of page 60, right at the bottom. It'll start out by saying row 62 and then 64 is the first um, number inside the parentheses. It says to work an established pattern. So we're just gonna work straight across this row without any decreases. So go ahead and work row 64. So now the instructions say to repeat the last two rows twice. And let me just explain briefly again as a reminder what we did in the last two rows. Okay, for the next row, 
we are going to decrease at the neck edge and then work across in pattern stitch. And then the following row, we're going to work across, going this direction, of course, in pattern stitch, no decreases. And then we'll do another row starting on this end with a decrease at the neck edge, going all the way across in pattern stitch. And then the last row will be just going across one more time in pattern stitch. So go ahead and do those four rows and then I'll show you what I have. Now for row 69, now this is the top right hand column of page 60 where it says row 67 outside the parentheses and the first number inside the parentheses is 69, that's for the small size. It says to repeat row 63 which is again the row where we work a double crochet, two together decrease on this end and then work across in pattern stitch. So I'll go ahead and do that with you. Just do that decrease and then work across in pattern stitch. So I'll go ahead and do that and then I will give you another assignment. And for the sake of clarity, I wanted to show you the last three stitches of row 69, which I'm just going to work in pattern stitch. Instead of working post stitches or any of that here, I'm just going to resume the double stitch, which is single crochet, double crochet to the end. Okay, that way it will match what I've done on the other side. Now, if you've chosen to work these and in post stitches, that's fine, but just whatever you did on the other side, the right front, make sure you do it on the right left as well. Okay, I do have a slight correction to let you know about in the book. This is on the upper right hand column of page 60. It'll say Nix 8 and then inside the parentheses, the number is 9, then 9, then 10, then 13, then 14, and then 15 rows. That is incorrect. It is all off by one. That should read the same as the other side and that should be the next seven on the outside of the parentheses for the extra small and then inside the parentheses there should be an eight and then an eight then a nine then a twelve then a thirteen and then a fourteen that is all listed in the errata section um, on my website that I've asked you to print out before we started so that should be pretty clear um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work the next eight rows since I'm working the small size in pattern stitch and then I'm going to fasten off. So I will show you what I have after I complete those eight rows. Once we finish the left front panel, let me just give you a quick view of the indentation of the armhole opening and the gradual decrease here along the neck edge. I'm going to go ahead and put a picture of this in here right now so that you can see a clearer view of what this will look like. Well, that concludes video number one on learning how to make the back and the two front panels. If you haven't already subscribed, I please wanted to ask if you could please hit that subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you've gotten this far and you're still enjoying yourself. And if you could hit that notification bell, you won't miss any more of the videos in the series. Join me for video number two to follow. And in this video, I will show you how to make the sleeves for your sweater. I'll see you in video number two. God bless. Bye-bye.